All the way from Alberta, all the way to British Columbia, the big tankers are in front of my reservation. If there's an oil spill, we're dead. We don't have any food. Our food comes right out of that water. And they don't have to spill very much oil. We remember uh, the 50s oil spill that killed the ducks and how hungry we went. I remember that. And the uh, Port Alberni oil spill and uh, the Valdez oil spill. All of those oil spills killed wildlife and it doesn't kill it for one or two seasons. It's decades, decades to restore. And then the shellfish are no good for a long time because they eat whatever sinks and that becomes deadly for us. We cannot survive without hunting and fishing. We cannot survive because our, uh, even when we're employed, we make less than non-native people for the same work. A carpenter on the reserve makes $9 an hour in the city, makes 27 And that's just the way colonialism works. And we're used to that, but we go hunting, we get the food or we go fishing. If, the, if that's destroyed, then we starve, literally. And that's, uh, that's what happened. I, I know I was in the hospital with malnutrition many times. Every time there was an oil spill, we went hungry. Some of us died. My little friend died when I was about eight. My little friend died of hunger. So we know what the repercussions are. And the oil sands is dangerous from start to finish. It's dangerous in the territory that it's being exploited. The ducks, the fish in the, the white fish in the uh, Peace River and the ducks that are in the Peace River Delta are going to die. The moose um, and then all the other animals that go with that. The high bush cranberry that Aboriginal people eat almost like you eat potatoes, you know, I mean it's these foods are critical to their survival and they're going to die. Nobody can say that it's safe. And then it's going to come through the rest of Canada too. Nobody here is safe. Oil spills from uh, tankers on trains, that's another danger. Oil spills from tankers in trucks is another danger and that's going to go through 167 First Nations territories. So all those nations don't want it. There isn't a single First Nation that is endorsing um, tar sands. And it's in law that they're supposed to consult with us. Not one word, not one word. It's in treaty territory. So it's not even legal to exploit it. Not one word. And there's four nations that are taking uh, Canada and whoever is it Exxon? Whoever it is that's exploiting the oil to court. But one young lady, Labacan, from, oh, I can't remember the reserve. Anyway, she went and addressed Congress. Congress voted against it. And so the president vote, uh, vetoed it. They're not, they're not buying the oil from tar sands. So that's a problem for Canada. We have an ally in the United States, which is very unusual. But next term, it could be Hillary Clinton that's the president. It could be Donald Trump. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, anything could happen, and, and that could change. But we're still determined not to allow uh, the oil to, to be developed. I know my brother-in-law is the grand chief of BC, uh, chiefs has been arrested, my aunt's been arrested, a bunch of uh, non-native people have been arrested over it. We've got a lot of allies in the environmental movement internationally that say, yeah, no to tar sands. They knew 80 years ago when they first found it that it was an environmental disaster. That's why they didn't develop it for 40 years because they said then it was an environmental disaster waiting to happen. And now they're doing it, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous.